In yesterday's video, we uncovered an insidious plot hatched by the bosses of the Gamora Casino to overthrow the Strip at Caesar's request. We found holotape evidence of torture, dead bodies behind locked doors. It was indeed a dark discovery. But in that video, we sided with Kachino, one of the Omerta lieutenants who wanted to overthrow his bosses. But Kachino's not really a good guy. He wasn't a very sympathetic character. There is one final way to resolve the situation at Gamora without siding with Kachino. If we go back in time to the point of no return, just after we found Kachino's journal, which gave us evidence of Kachino's business on the side, and evidence that he misused the merchandise here at Gamora, instead of using it as a bargaining chip to get Kachino's help, we can turn Kachino in to Big Saul and Nero the Omerta bosses. Now, we can't do this by simply unlocking the door to the Zoara Club and heading up the stairs. If we do, we turn everybody hostile. So, somewhat counterintuitively, we must first go to Kachino, inform him that we have the journal, and then tell him that we're gonna keep his journal for a little while longer. All right, all right. I can't stop you, but I think we can help each other out. Once done, we can then walk to the door here in Brimstone to the Zoara Club. Incidentally, Zoara is the name of the town that Lot escaped to after fleeing from Sodom, where he left his wife as a pillar of salt. We find it guarded by an Omerta thug. Hey buddy, Zoara is off limits to everyone but family. After telling Kachino that we plan to keep the journal for ourselves, we find that this thug now has new dialogue options. What is Zoara? Zoara is our club. The family club. If you got business with the bosses, you can go upstairs to talk to them. What do you mean by family? Family, the fucking Emeritus. Are you new around here or what? I have business with your bosses. What business is that? We have a couple of options. We can try to remain tight-lipped by saying, My business with the bosses is my business, not yours. It's my fucking job, and no one sees the bosses unless I give the okay. We must then pass a 50 speech check to say, it involves Kachino, and if you don't let me through, it'll involve you too. Okay, calm down. I'm just doing my job. Go talk to the bosses. One of them should be upstairs. Look for Big Saul or Nero. I'll tell Kachino to head upstairs. Or we can simply be upfront with this guy and say, one of your soldiers has been breaking family rules. Here's the proof. Yeah? Give me what you got. What the fuck? Oh shit. Yeah, go talk to Nero or Big Saul upstairs. They'll want to see this. I'll send Kachino to the office as well. Either way, he gives us a key to the Zorara Club. We can now use this key to unlock and pass through any of the doors here in Gamora. Then, much as we did in yesterday's video, we can walk up the stairs, pass through the billiard room, and into the hallway where we find Big Saul sitting on a couch. You got something you need to talk about? We explored all of Big Sal's dialogue options in yesterday's video, so instead we'll cut right to the chase. I have proof one of your lieutenants is dealing behind your back. Do you now? Let's see it. Is it worth a hundred caps to you? Here, now give it over. Or we can pass a 55 barter check to say, I'll give it to you for 200 caps. Okay, that sounds fair. Here, now give it over. The fuck is this shit? Kachino, you dumb motherfucker. Yeah, we are going to have some words with Kachino. Meet me in my office. We then follow Big Saul through the billiard room and into his office, only to see that the Omerta thug had sent Kachino up to the office already. We find him waiting in a chair. Kachino, you really disappointed me. Oh, I'm sorry, boss. Sometimes I just can't control myself. I don't know what's wrong with me. I, I swear I can turn this around. Just give me another chance. I don't want to fucking hear it. You've lost the trust of the family. Goodbye. I hope hell isn't too hot for you. Kachino is executed by an Omerta hitman named Button Man. This is the only time in the game where we will find Button Man. Sadly, he doesn't have anything unique to say. After Kachino was murdered, we can go talk with Big Saul. Thanks for bringing Kachino's transgressions to our attention. Shame we had to put him down. He was a good lieutenant. 
Before he died, Caccino mentioned you had something big planned. Did he now? Funny that. More backstabbing? Yeah, we got something big planned. I was actually hoping to jar at you about that. Now that Caccino is gone, we need some help wrapping some things up. And you seem like the resourceful type. What kind of help do you need? Two of the players, Troy and Clandon, have some problems that need to be solved. Ask them what they need. What was Caccino's role in the plan? As one of our captains, Caccino was kind of a project manager. He made sure people had what they needed to get their jobs done. Can you tell me more about the plan? The plan is called Racket. But that's all the info you're going to get out of me right now. And with that, we need to now go track down Clandon and Troik, just like we had to when working with Kachino in yesterday's video, but this time for very different reasons. We'll start with Clandon. Taking the elevator up to the suite's level, we can head to his private suite, where we find him walking around his bedroom. Good to see you again. Hope you're winning some money in here. The bosses sent me to offer you assistance. Oh, that's great. I sure could use some help. You see, I do explosives, and they have a special need for some big explosions. Problem is, there's no way I can get enough explosives to do the type of damage they're looking to do. Much less get it all deployed. What do you need the bombs for? Blowing shit up, of course. Thing is, they don't need things to blow up. They need people to die in a fairly large area in a fairly small time frame. There are other ways to kill people with bombs aside from explosions, if you know what I mean. We can pass a 60s science check to say, a gas, perhaps chlorine? It is a deadly nerve gas, and not too hard to come by. Spot on, you're a bright one. I figure chlorine gas is the way to go. It's toxic, and I can rig it up to do a whole lot of killing in a fairly short time frame. Where can I find some chlorine gas? I'm not sure exactly. There is a swimming pool at the Ultralux, so they probably have some. Although I doubt they'd appreciate you taking it. But they must get it from somewhere. Maybe try out in Freeside somewhere. So we have two ways to track down the chlorine. We'll start by heading to the Ultralux Casino. We haven't covered this casino in much detail just yet, but like all of the casinos in New Vegas, it has its own dark and sordid story. Never fear, we will get to it in time. But to complete this portion of the quest, we head through the casino gambling floor towards the cashier's office. Through the double doors here, we can pass to the hotel reception lobby where we find Mortimer manning the desk. Heading to the elevator lobby behind this desk, we see a locked utility door to the southeast. It's locked with an easy lock. We just have to make sure that the Ultralux guards aren't watching before we crouch down to pick it. Inside, we find a storage closet, minor tools, junk and scrap, and on a shelf to the right, we find a small jar of chlorine. If we steal it, we do lose karma, but we can now take it back to Clandon. Alternatively, if we don't want to steal it from the Ultralux, we can head to Mick and Ralph's Weapon Shop in Freeside. Now, the Fallout New Vegas strategy guide says that when talking with Ralph, we have to pass a speech check to convince him to give us the chlorine. However, in my game, for some reason, I did not find this speech check. Instead, I found a container of chlorine for sale in his vendor inventory for only 51 caps. I can't explain why my game was different from the strategy guide, except that maybe I have a mod installed that changed the way this quest worked in an attempt perhaps to fix a bug. At any rate, no matter how we chose to get our hands on the chlorine, when done, we can take it back to Clandon. Hey, did you track down some chlorine for me? I sure did. Here you go. Great. Yeah, this is just what I needed. With that, we give Clandon everything he needs to build a weapon of mass destruction. And that is not an exaggeration. Chlorine is nasty stuff. The fact that the Omeritas are even considering using it is horrifying. It was first used in combat during World War I by Germany, though both sides eventually ended up using it against each other. Troops exposed to chlorine gas claimed that it had a distinct smell of pepper and pineapple. It tasted like metal and it stung at the back of the throat and deep in the chest. In high concentrations, chlorine can be fatal after only inhaling a few deep breaths. It kills people by reacting with water in the body, turning that water into hydrochloric acid, which corrodes human tissue, chemically burning people from the inside out. 
It's safe to use in swimming pools as a disinfectant, which is why the Ultralux had it, but only in small amounts. But in the hands of a man like Clandon, whose sadism we are well familiar with, it is indeed a weapon of mass destruction. Next, we need to track down Troik in the family members only VIP lounge of the Zawara Club. Who are you? I didn't do anything. Leave me alone. Your bosses sent me to you to see if you needed any help with your work for them. Yeah, I heard you might be coming. I appreciate the help. I'm in kind of a fix. I helped the Omeritas get guns without the NCR catching wind of it. I need someone to cover my ass with the last shipment. If we try to ask him why he's working for the Omeritas... Sorry, that's my business and no one else's. He's cagey. He doesn't tell us anything about the dead prostitute or possibly being framed. We only find that out by working with Kachino. Tell me about the problem with the last shipment. The Fiends, a group of raiders freaked out on Kim's, stole my last shipment before I could get it into Vegas. I could sure use some help getting it from them. It's likely that we've already discovered and looted this stolen shipment of weapon parts long ago, because it appears in the world even before we ever accept this quest. To find the stolen weapon parts, we head west of the Sunset Sarsaparilla bottling factory. Off in the distance near to the hills, we see a big burning barrel and a bunch of fiends boldly barricaded behind it. There will be three to five fiends here, depending on our level. After killing the fiends, we can race up to the camp where we find a big box by the burning barrel behind which the fiends were boldly barricaded. This is the disassembled weapons shipment. It's red, which means we're stealing to take it, but we don't suffer a karma loss by taking it. Incidentally, since this is a quest item, we can't drop it from our inventory without using console commands. This means that if we loot the disassembled weapons shipment, but we choose not to side with the bosses, we've got this stuck in our inventory forever. PC gamers can get around this by opening up the console and typing player.removeitem space 11F55A space 1. At any rate, I had looted this item long ago, and I had it in my inventory. So I just gave it to Troik. Do you mean these weapon parts, Troik? What the hell? You got this from the fiends already? Hot damn, you really are good. Thanks, this is exactly what I needed. With that, we've helped the Omeritas get everything they need to continue with their plans. So heading back up to Saul's office... Hey, it's my good friend again. What can I do for you? I'm all done with that work you needed. I heard you did some good work for us. Thank you. Here's a little cash from us to you. Try not to spend it all in one place. We complete the quest how little we know, but we gain strip infamy which can negatively affect our reputation. We can talk with him again to pass a 50 speech check to say you should buy guns from Mick and Ralph. People are starting to ask questions. All right, you've done some good work for us. I'll do this as a favor for you. By the way, I'm planning on playing some games in the casino. You play some games, have some fun. You did right by us. And with that, he gives us 50 Gamora chips to spend on the games. When we're all done with Big Sal, we can head back to Mick and Ralph's to tell Mick the good news. I wish I'd never gotten involved with the Omertas. All of this bloodshed. One of these days, those bastards will get what's coming to them. In the meantime, I'll be sure to be more careful with my sales. Anyway, is there anything I can get you? Not sure how Mick knows so much about what the Omeritas were planning, and despite him just saying that he's going to be more careful with his sales, we can pass a speech check to say, Good news! The Omeritas say they'll buy arms from you again. Outstanding. You have no idea how much this means to me. But I think this little beauty will give you an idea. <laughs> <laughs> and for some reason, after being wary about the Omeritas, he is now really excited to be working with them. And we get the Pimp Boy 3 billion. One thing I failed to mention in yesterday's video is that we can always swap between the standard Pimp Boy and the Pimp Boy 3 billion by visiting Mick at any time. 
We can now head back to Gamora and spend our 50 Gamora chips by playing some of the games. The Gamora Casino is one of the casinos where we have to gamble at to get the achievement, The Courier Who Broke the Bank. To break the bank at Gamora, we have to win 9,000 chips or more from gambling. At 9,000 chips, we get banned from gambling at the casino ever again. The prizes for gambling at Gamora are also less than stellar. Instead of winning a player home from gambling like we did at the tops, we only win two Brahmin steak if we earn 2,250 chips, one Mentats, one Jet, and two bottles of wine after winning 4,500 chips, and a full suit of reinforced combat armor but it's not fully repaired if we win 6,750 chips. So no player home, which is a bit of a bummer. And that is the full story of the Gamora Casino. Note that at no point while working with Saul and Nero do we learn that Caesar is really the one behind the Omerta's activities here on the Strip. We only learn that if we side with Kachino. If we do side with Kachino while trying to do a Legion playthrough, Caesar gets so angry that he nearly executes us. The Omerta's distraction is a big part of his plan to take House out of the picture, but it's really easy to mess this up for Caesar since we don't even know that he's involved. So, if siding with the Legion, it's important to turn in Kachino and instead do these quick jobs for the Omeritas. What are your thoughts on the Gamora Casino? Who did you side with during your gameplay? And which of these options is the most moral one? In my opinion, this is one of those situations where there is no real moral option. A good karma character clearly can't side with Big Saul and Nero. They're planning to use chlorine gas to kill people on the strip. At least with Kachino, he plans on focusing on the casino business, but we know the way that he treats the prostitutes. He treats them like his own personal playthings, and he's not afraid to use strong-armed tactics to get rid of anyone he thinks is in his way. I suppose we could always just kill them all, leaving Gamora with no leadership. And did you ever gamble enough at Gamora to get kicked out? Share with me your thoughts in the comments section below. I publish weekly content here on my channel on a variety of topics concerning all of the Fallout games. If you want to make sure you don't miss my next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I have quite a selection of shirts in the shop. My shirts come in a wide array of colors and in a variety of sizes. I also have a bunch of other products besides shirts, so if interested you can find a link to my shop in the description below or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and be sure to tune in next time for a brand new video.